Things have escalated quickly at Splash Mountain while Tiana's palace looks darn near finished. We got knothole views in Adventureland and news on the future of Tortilla Joe's. But first, let's check in on the status of those Adventureland restrooms. First thing I noticed when I got there is that it looks like the, the walls have grown. They, they, there's like a rectangular section that has pushed out further into the walkway. I'm sure that means that they're probably, you know, uprooting more concrete, getting into more of the plumbing system. Men's room is still closed. Women's room is still open. Of course, the story here is what we can see on the other side of the walls, and, and that's what we can see. That, that I was not expecting to see it this week. We didn't see it last. That's the old rock work right there. They've actually salvaged some of it, which is a good sign that we may be seeing something like it return. They may rebuild it. If they weren't planning to rebuild those rocks and that little, that little water feature, then they would have just go ahead and destroy the whole thing. Mind you, it's not a lot. It's just the, you know, the, the far right section of it, but it's still there just the same, which does mean if that is the case that these, these walls could be up for a while, long enough for them to first to repair whatever it is they're doing below grade, you know, the, the pipes, etc., for the plumbing, but then they got to rebuild that, that rock feature, which that could take even longer. So uh, I would look for these walls to be up in Adventureland for a few months, I'm guessing. It doesn't actually look like they've made a lot of progress. In fact, if anything, it looks a little worse than it did last week. Look, we found an actual knot hole. Yay. <laughs> There's a better look at the pipes from this angle, a little more clear. You could just see that they've just torn everything up. And then here's some more of that rock work that's still existing. This is separate from what we saw in the other angle. So there's more remaining. Again, it's not a lot, but it's enough to make me believe that they're gonna keep it. I was in the park on Wednesday and I didn't get any video, but I did take these pictures of some walls that popped up really quick at the Tropical Hideaway. These are right at the exit, you know, where that bridge is. This shot is from the front. This is from the interior of Tropical Hideaway as you cross the bridge and leaving towards Jungle Cruise. I guess they, I guess whatever it is they were doing was brief because when I came back the other day, the walls were down and I'm assuming this is what they were working on right here. I'll, I, I don't have any reference footage. <laughs> I've never shot the ground before in this area, so I have no idea. I couldn't say if that's how it looked before. I, I don't remember. If anybody knows what that is, I, I'd be curious to find out. We'll go to Adventureland Treehouse next where there was a lot of whooping and hollering going on behind those scrims. Many, many crew could be seen and heard of working on the treehouse. It was very busy, very loud. They are working feverishly, I think, to get this done as, as soon as possible. That's the daughter's room, but I, I, I saw some crew up there. I wasn't sure what they were doing, but that the exterior there looks to be about finished. I can't see, though, on this shot, whether or not they've worked on any of the theming or interior features. There's some new scaffolding up here, which to me looks to be right about where the water wheel would be. So it could be that they're getting ready to install that. I've been waiting for this because <laughs> that gives us uh, a good a good idea of what you know where other things are going to be and how they relate to each other via that water wheel. Meanwhile, no real update on those uh, features or fixtures that were installed last week over the wall that we could see. Uh, it looks about the same. Nothing new there. Let's take a peek through the walls and we can see that they are definitely building. Like it looks to be. You know, I want to call it a wall. That was not there, you know, a few, you know, a couple weeks ago, a month ago. So I'm guessing that that is part of the, the exit as you come down the treehouse to create a little definition. Oh, look, there's a guy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There was a lot of people working back there. Here's another look at that wall. I, 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 it looks like they're attaching some, uh, you know, they're going to build some rock work around that wall. The wall, there's a... There's a base. There's the there's the concrete wall form inside, and then they and then they place the. I mean, I, I'm guessing that's what that is. That's going to be rock work around that wall. It needs to be fortified. I'm I'm assuming that's why they're building it this way. I can't tell if those are forms or not. Those the wood though. Let's try that again. Here's another shot. This is this is further down the left. And these guys are working behind where that concrete wall is deeper into the, actually closer to the base of the tree where these guys are working. I can't tell what they're installing, but that does look like mesh also. Uh, they're, they're, they're doing, there's mesh all over the place. Um, 
So they are definitely working quickly on building more of that rock work. And to give you some reference, where we're at is to the left of that scaffolding. Right about there where the bamboo is. That's about where those guys were working. Let's get back over the wall again, take a longer view of the, this is gonna be the, the exit of the attraction. And it gives us a, a, you know, a small view into the kitchen area. There's another construction worker working on the, the rock work. You, there again, you can see the waterfall. That, that rock work that's complete back there is the old rock work that they have repaired. Uh, and they are going to restore you know, that, that waterfall feature there. And we'll zoom in on the sun's room, top right of the treehouse where I found more crew working. I couldn't tell quite what they were doing. I'm actually, it was very difficult to see, so I, <laughs> if I had, there we go, move up, David, camera up, thank you, okay, there we go, I, I'm not sure what exactly they were doing, there's one guy on a, looks like he's on a ladder, I, mean, I think he's, is he painting, that's a tape measure, I, I'm not sure what's happening here, I can't tell, or is that like a nail gun, perhaps, I moved further back to see if I can't get a, bit, a flatter angle, but to no avail. I was not able to really get a good idea of what they were doing. But like I said, feverish. Feverish is how I would describe the pace of the construction happening at the Adventureland Treehouse. We're going to go to Fantasyland next to give you guys a quick update on what's happening with the dark rides there. Peter Pan is still closed. Toads is open, but they didn't take down the walls or the scrim in front of the attraction. But it is open. That's a queue right there. Looks like not a lot of guests are <laughs> figuring that out on this day. Alice in Wonderland is also open through this. I wanted to shoot from here because I love the way the tea party looks. But that is in the background there <laughs> through the tea party. Alice in Wonderland is open, closing again on July 5th. Over to Toontown, just looking for walls at this point, which there are none in this part of the park out in front of Roger Rabbit. No walls in front of Centennial Park. That seems to be business as usual. But as we reported last week, there are now walls up at the... I don't know what they call this park, actually. I've forgotten. But the middle the middle grassy area out in front of Goofy's Playhouse or Play Yard is now covered in or surrounded by walls. I'm guessing that they're replacing the, the grass, is my guess. Walls are still up around the popcorn cart also at the rear of the park at, at Popcorn Park. Leaving Toontown in Fantasyland, walls have come up around uh, the castle. That's not around the restrooms. These walls are just, I'm not sure what they, usually when they do this, it's for concrete or even something less uh, relevant, but the, the restrooms are still open. Those walls, I'm not sure what they're doing here, but it's probably nothing big. While we're in the neighborhood, we'll catch this monorail right here to see what's going on in downtown Disney. And just like last week, not a lot to see now from here because these two structures are com blocking our view. So this right here is about the only thing we'll be able to see them working on. But again, we've caught you know them doing quite a bit of work here. A lot of a lot of construction workers here. You can see some. I think those are forms on the ground there, uh, stacked up. Those look to be like forms. Forms are they they put them together side by side to create a gap, and then inside the gap between the, the pair of forms, they pour the concrete to build a wall. Uh, and those curved forms are for a curved concrete feature, which uh, we'll see. I, I'm not sure if those forms have been already used or if they're going to be used. That's um, I can't say, but here's an update on the little path thing that we were talking about or have seen the last couple weeks. More concrete has been poured here. They, they poured concrete where we saw just rebar last week uh, in that shady area underneath the tree. That was just rebar last week, and you can see now there's another slice of, of space here with rebar that they're going to be pouring another section of concrete. My, you know, as we mentioned last week, the, likely this is uh, just simply for aesthetic. You know that they're doing it in this way although it's possible I kind of think it, it could be for irrigation uh, water runoff you know the way they built today they build things with just a very imperceptible grade so that the water all flows into one central location and that, that that water gets fed into a reservoir and you know it gets collected could be for that but I don't really see anything I, I, we missed it from the weeks prior I don't know if that's perhaps what was underneath that, you know, the rebar there. Could be, but I'm not sure. Um, but most likely it is just aesthetic. I think that's like a social engineering thing. 
uh, why they why they create these variations in the in the way that the concrete looks is to get guests to stop, so they don't all just walk in a straight line. You want the guests to kind of be moving around a little bit. I think there's, I know that there is some sort of social engineering aspect to that. And then we got this footage from uh, the street team shot from the Disneyland Hotel, giving us a very long view of what's happening. Uh, here in this first pause, we can see that they've sectioned off certain areas. Those two rectangular sections, the little zigzag pattern there, they're, they're preparing that area for new concrete. Uh, they've, they've sectioned it off and then you'll see them put rebar next and then pour concrete. Nice shot. Well done. Whoever shot this, well done. You got a monorail in the background and everything. Nice slow pan to the right. Looks good. There's that big structure we can see from the monorail. And then here's, it looks like they've discovered the Well of the Souls over here in the, in the right part of this shot. There's a construction, there's a wall up. I'm not sure why they felt like they had to build that wall by itself and then nothing else, but it's been like that for a couple weeks now. But there's the, you know, they, they, they're, built, they're digging for foundation and or the Well of the Souls, I'm sure. It depends on whether or not they have the measurements right for the staff of Raw to find out if they've dug in the proper place. Only time will tell. I love Indiana Jones. <laughs> so those those are probably, uh, you know, for footings for, uh, in, for uh, as they get ready to build a, a very, I'm guessing, a very large, impressive structure here. I mentioned in the intro that we have news on Tortilla Joe's. We had speculated that Tortilla Joe's may start going into a demo phase once they finish Ralph Brennan's. I am now hearing that that is not the case, that, that Tortilla Joe's will be here for as long as it takes them to finish, or get near finished at least, Catal, uh, or I should say Paseo and Centrico. When Paseo and Centrico are near finished, that's when we'll see Tortilla Joe's begin to get demoed. That's probably a year from now, is my guess. So you guys still have time to get your tableside guac uh, at Tortilla Joe's for probably another year or so. Meanwhile, nothing really new to report from Catal. Same situation in terms of the gutted interiors and the, and the scrim up. We do have this shot from Ballast Point, which could show that they are definitely in a major dirt phase still. A lot of uh, digging up is happening here. One thing that I will observe here, actually, is that they haven't dug up the concrete between the old Catal entrance and, and the Uva Bar. I was wondering if they might create a new system of delivering food because the kitchen for the uva bar was actually in Catal, obviously and they would have to back and forth they would be having be, people would be bringing food back and forth across that little space and it was awkward and i wonder i'm wondering if they were going to try to improve on that but so far i don't see where that is the case as of yet but this is something that i'll want to pay attention to to see if they figure out some way to make a more elegant solution to deliver food from what will be Paseo to Centrico. Head back around to the other side of Catal and uh, I've seen a sign. We need to rest. All right. <laughs> it's probably a good idea anyway. It's hot. <sighs> Restaurant. <laughs> I was way off. <laughs> okay, let's jump over to the DCA. Where we got some, you know, this is kind of, I find this interesting. It's its a small story, but these are the kind of things that I enjoy. Uh, I like getting, I like reporting these kind of updates. The red car trolley. Uh, I was excited when it returned, but it's been just the one car. One red car trolley. It goes back and forth, back and forth. But as of this week, they are now running two red car trolleys. Which, you know, <laughs> that's a big deal for me. I enjoy that a lot. I especially enjoy having the opportunity for two red car trolleys to pass on Hollywood Boulevard. This is, I love watching vehicles like on Main Street, etc. pass each other. And there is the 717, numbered 717 uh, after the day that Disneyland opened. We'll go to San Francisco next. Cocina Cucamonga, no updates there on the Silvestaria. I have to try really hard to pronounce that correctly. Uh, still in the siding phase. Still no San Francisco sign that's supposed to be on those, uh, I don't know what you call those, those pillars, those wood pillars in the water. The walls have grown over here by the eventual location of the Baymax meet and greet right here. The walls have grown a little bit. 
they're going to install a, a you know a, a, a merchandise an outdoor merchandise shop here this back area here looks to be about as we left it i'm kind of looking forward to seeing how this if they're well i guess this is it i like the art i just i want to say i like the art on the walls i feel like that's you know i know it's a small thing and i, I was hoping for more but i do like what they've done here with all the uh you know the iconography what are they gonna do with this truck the because all reference to pacific wharf is going to be removed so will the fresh baked truck remain because it's got pacific wharf on there across the way embarcadero gifts has been uh put up behind scrim and walls it's still open so i'm not sure what they're doing i thought maybe they did you guys know it's a pandora shop it's been a Pandora shop since like March. <laughs> I had no idea. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if that's, I don't think that's related to what they're doing. I think it's just paint. But I was, you know, I walked in like, this is not what I remembered in Barcadero Gifts being. I thought it was a Little Mermaid shop. But these walls and the scrim extend all the way down this corridor towards the, uh, the restrooms here at the other end as you, uh, as you approach Grizzly, Grizzly River Run. That, so that that's tells me it's facade work, paint and polish. And we'll leave California Adventure. We've got some more business to attend to back in uh, Disneyland. Going back to New Orleans Square. Check in on Tiana's Palace, which last week we saw that they had revealed pretty much the entirety of the facade. You know, all the paint and everything was done there. And they were still working on what's happening on the, on the roof of that location. But one thing that we've been watching, and I, again, this is kind of fun for me. They have finally painted the stage, the, the, the bandstand. They have finally painted it. Brand new coat there. It, it's no longer that, that faded, worried-looking situation. In fact, I believe that they were just painting it on that day because uh, we saw a crew there taking down the plastic coverings, you know, to, uh, to make sure there was no paint on the wrought iron and that kind of thing. So this is very fresh, very new development here. The bandstand has been painted. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest of my day now. Looking over from the Dizon Railroad uh, station, you can see that the, the plastic coverings have also been removed at the Mint Julep Bar, revealing a nice clean coat of paint for that. And that does look like they have freshened up the Mint Julep Bar paint there on the wall. I feel like that is, I mean, I guess, I don't know, who could say for sure, but it does look fresh to me, clean. Oh, and here on the, on the, this is to the right of the mint julep bar. They have taken down some of the scrim there to reveal, uh, you know, fresh paint on the, on the balcony up there, the second floor. I don't know if any of those theming elements that are hung on the wall, if that's new or not. I, I don't have any reference footage of that. So I'm not sure if that's new, but they, yeah, that's fresh paint there. And they have opened up the walls, you know, it's opened up the path here quite a bit. It's surprising to see just how obtrusive those walls were on this path that was already narrow to begin with. Let's grab Grandpa and see what we can see with a little bit of a tighter shot. That is the that white wall there. That's right about where the wheelhouse window will be, which they've covered that up so we can't see if there's any progress there. You can't see that decorative item that goes just above that, the decorative piece for Tiana, you know, where they're going to have the, uh, the emblem, Tiana's Palace emblem up there. And I can't really see them. Do, there, there's crew back there working, but I can't see if they're doing anything for the smokestacks that are supposed to be, you know, that are bracketing that window, which is that white thing in the right third of the frame. Where this gentleman is standing here is right about where they're supposed to be installing a new mobile order station. Mobile order is kind of awkward at the French market. Uh, it, this place wasn't built for that kind of ordering. So they're, they're building something from scratch. I hope that they really... Uh, French Market is the you know, same thing for the Mint Julep Bar. I don't think that they built that place to expect the kind of crowds that arrive at the Mint Julep Bar now, you know, with a queue of 100 people deep. So hopefully they're, they're able to modernize both the, the, the mobile order pickup window and the Mint Julep Bar pickup area to accommodate more guests, because that does need it. We'll try to see if we can dig into the interiors. Again, this looks very much like uh, it has been gutted. Uh, he's sanding something down. That means he's getting ready to paint there, I'm sure. And if we slide to the right, I can't. I was hoping to see something, but it's just too much shadow. Oh. Yeah. 
That is a lot of, uh, boy, that's right about where the, we should be seeing the cafeteria style, you know, uh, buffet type line right there. That's right about where you would normally see that. So man, that's interesting. What are they doing there? I hope I can see some of that. <laughs> I'll be paying attention. That's interesting. So I feel like we're nearing completion here at Tiana's Palace. And I'm actually, I gotta say, I like what I've seen so far. It, I feel like just design-wise, thematically, it's an upgrade to the French market. And I feel like there's an opportunity here to create a very nice, seamless transition from Tiana's Palace to the courtyard with the fountain and then into Haunted Mansion. This could be really nice. I mean, I can just hear the music now and I don't know, man. I'm actually kind of looking forward to this. And it does extend as well. You, you come out here to the Haunted Mansion and you can extend that thematic feeling to the eventual Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I've always thought that the transition from Haunted Mansion to Splash Mountain was, was terrific. It was a nice way to transition from one land to the other. It was great. There's a possibility, there's potential here for it to be even better now. And that's something to be optimistic about in terms of what's the, you know, what can be, what is possible? What can they do between Haunted Mansion and Splash Mountain or Tiana's Bayou Adventure? I'm actually, I'm already feeling optimistic about this. Having said that, allow me to bum you out now because on this day, man, we saw a lot of crew working today. And on this day, we found that they have put up scaffolding all around the top of the mountain and the tree stump above the mountain. That is uh, th that is the beginning of the end, really, of, of that mountain. Well, I should say the mountain itself is going to remain. They're not going to take down the mountain, obviously, because you need that for the, for the flume drop. But the tree stump, that's what all this is for, is so that they can get to the top of the mountain. That tree stump is going to be, it's going to be removed. But it's really startling seeing all of these crew up there working uh, in order to take down this, this part of the attraction. Not that it can't be better. There's no reason to believe that it can't be better than what they have now, right? No reason to believe that we won't get something even more delightful in a year and a half. But today, we're seeing the, the preparation is the beginnings of a very significant part of this attraction being removed. It's not going to happen tomorrow, but it is it is happening. It's they're not wasting any time on this. They are moving quickly. And by the way, this is week 3 of the Splash Mountain update. Week 3 and the secret path is still open and we can still <laughs> we can still catch some riverboat traffic. Today it was the Mark Twain. I'm waving at a bunch of fans out there who happened to catch me on the river or on the secret path. Week three, and the Briar Patch gift shop is still open. And Br'er Rabbit and his friends are still inside. We'll be keeping an eye on that. Here's a shot from uh, Hungry Bear where we're gonna be watching to see what happens here in terms of demo. Already we can see that there have been new tags applied. Those tags are on the light fixtures. So I'm not sure yet if it's just the, the, the light fixtures that are being removed or if it's the entire thing. We'll stay tuned. This also is another look from this angle at the what they're doing here with the tree stump on top of the on top of the mountain. All these guys the whooping and hollering, all this is is just installing the scaffolding though. They haven't destroyed anything yet. Here's a look at the facade, the front of the Splash Mountain attraction. No development here. I was told though that I was correct in in a way that they did remove you know, the an outer layer of the wood features here. The veneer is what the term is. A veneer has been removed and they will probably reapply a new veneer sometime in the future. No update on the backside of Splash Mountain and uh, the, every week that goes by here where we don't see any change here is making me happy because I love, I love the backside of Splash Mountain. I did get an answer though, it looks like I, I did, of what's gonna happen to that, 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 that house that's on the, you know, the that we talked about last week and whether or not that was gonna make it. There is now scaffolding around that house, which is not a good sign if you're a fan of that little house, but you know, who knows? Maybe it could just be they wanna paint it or freshen it up, but yeah. Scaffolding is now around that tiny little house and there's another construction worker up there working on building that scaffolding. No scaffolding though, nothing on this house. 
uh, on this part of the exterior part of the attraction. We'll stay tuned. Oh, and that's it. <laughs> that's the end of our report. I thought there was more. Fresh baked. Uh, my gosh, what a busy week. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned, as always, because we do these every single week. Uh, there's, I mean, I counted something like 15, 16 different stories we're tracking right now. So, uh, you know, little things. And there's, there's more. There's more to come. So keep watching Fresh Baked, uh, and we'll see you next week. Until then, be safe out there. Be kind to one another. And fresh bait.